Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to another episode of Characteristics of the Caller. We've been talking about the importance of being patient and being steadfast. Today, inshallah, in this episode, we want to talk about sacrifice. The need to sacrifice one's time, one's self, everything, whatever it takes in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before we do that, let's just have another reminder. Brothers and sisters, it's very important that as Muslims, we should not let our emotions get the better of us. If there is one thing that you must have learned by now from listening to these lectures and these episodes on characteristics of the caller, is how much you need to be in control of your emotions. This is really the key of character building, being in control of your emotions. Making these characteristics that we have been talking about, patience and perseverance and mercy and forgiveness and nasiha and ikhlas and controlling anger and all of these things, this is all about controlling your emotions, controlling your desires and trying to make certain characteristics, certain traits habitual so that it's normal for you that when something happens, you're patient, you're steadfast. You forgive, you overlook. And I'm sure when you look at all of these different characteristics that we've been talking about, you'll be able to see how very much one of them supports the other. To the extent that there's a great similarity, for example, between nasiha, that quality of nasiha, and forgiving and overlooking. It's very close. And trusting in Allah and having patience and persevering. Actually, all of these characteristics, and I mentioned this already, they work as a holistic whole. And that's why it's really important to try and imbibe as many of these characteristics within yourself as possible. Because having one is going to help you to initiate the other. So brothers and sisters, like I said, it's very important as Muslims, we don't let our emotions get the better of us. And it's certainly difficult for a person to look at the tragedies that are besetting the Muslim Ummah in the world today. And not sometimes to feel helpless and to feel almost overcome with sadness. But believers, we are called to put our trust in Allah and not to fall into despair and helplessness. We must continue to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with, to perform good deeds and stand as witnesses to justice and truth. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 177. Very important. It is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards the east or the west. This is important, brothers and sisters. Taqwa, righteousness, bir, these excellent characteristics that we have talked about. Righteousness is not by performing rituals. It's not righteousness that you turn your face to the east or you turn your face to the west. But it's righteousness to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the book and the messengers and to spend of your substance out of love for him, for your relatives, for the orphans, for the needy, for the traveler, for those who ask, and for the ransom of slaves, to be steadfast in prayer. This is now describing righteousness, being generous, overflowing in your generosity. This is, remember we described good character? This is what it's about. Being generous, being charitable, being steadfast in your prayer, 
giving charity again mentions charity again, subhanAllah, in these verses. To fulfill the contracts you have made, honestly, this is something we're going to be talking about. The importance of the characteristics of truthfulness and honesty. It's character here, brothers and sisters. You see how Allah is talking about character? And to be firm and patient. This is what we've been talking about. Steadfastness, patience, in pain and adversity. And then Allah says, the meaning of which is, such are the people of truth. Such are the people of truth, the God-fearing. These people that Allah has described, may Allah make us from them. These people, brothers and sisters, they are the muttaqun. They are the ones who truly are conscious and aware of Allah. These are the people of truth, the siddiqeen, the truthful ones. So brothers and sisters, I remember when many years ago, during the first intifada in Palestine, I went to visit the Palestinians there. And I remember that we came across a house that had been demolished by the Israeli army. Now the Israeli army had arrived at two o'clock in the morning. They took everybody out of the house and they demolished it. No court hearing. There was no opportunity for anybody to protest their innocence. What was their crime? Their crime, according to the Israeli army, was that their son was accused of, and I say accused of, having taken part in a peaceful demonstration. So what did they do? Demolish the whole house. So when the army left, the family started to try and rebuild the house. But then the army came back, posted a guard, and said, you will not touch one brick of that house. It's there as an example to everybody. Now, how would you react? How would most people react to such a terrible situation? And this is not, in the sense, you know, a force of nature. You know, if a hurricane comes, or a whirlwind, or an earthquake, or a tsunami, it's almost as if this is like a blind force of nature. It's just something that happens in this world in which we live. But this is human beings, people who have consciousness, people who have the ability supposedly to make moral choices, perpetuating this injustice upon you. So I think that's even harder. I think it's harder to take. But when we went to see them, how do we find this family living in a tent now? The family are now living in a tent, cooking, they went to the tent and they were sitting around making some tea, you know, and we went there and, you know, we said in Arabic, Kayfa haluk, salam alaykum. They said, wa alaykum aslam, kayfa haluk. What did you think they said? Oh, our condition is so terrible. They said, alhamdulillah. I mean, and they said it like they mean it, like alhamdulillah. All praises due to Allah. Alhamdulillah. Smiling. This is patience in adversity. This was a big sign for me. And actually, this is what I used to see. When I, as a young kid, went to spend my holidays in Egypt, this is exactly the sort of things that I used to see and experience. A type of patience on a different level. So this is a sign, this is an ayah from Allah, these ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives to this deen. So brothers and sisters, when you adopt these characteristics, it's true. As long as people look at you and they say, look at that Muslim. Look how patient these people are. Look how steadfast these people are. It becomes like a sign of the truth of Islam. Brothers and sisters, one of the things that we need to have one of the characteristics that we have to imbibe within ourselves. These things take practice. These things take effort, brothers and sisters. There's no switch. You will not be able to listen. I mean, it's, I don't even want to say it's possible. Anything's possible. But in reality, you will not be able to listen to one of these talks and then make a switch. And then you're going to be like this amazing person who has all of these characteristics. I've said already, this is not a switch, this is a process.
It takes effort. It takes effort. It takes application. It takes energy. It takes time. You have to cultivate patience. You have to cultivate steadfastness. You have to cultivate the ethos, the characteristic of being a person who is ready to sacrifice themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do you do it? You do it by doing it. You do it by doing it. You learn sacrifice by sacrificing. You learn the characteristic of patience by being patient. So brothers and sisters, we're going to take a short break. Don't go away. Inshallah, we'll be talking more about this important characteristic of sacrifice just in a few minutes. We'll be back soon. Salaam Alaikum. of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported Allah's messenger, may peace be upon him, as say, observe moderation in deeds and understand that none amongst you can attain salvation because of his deeds alone. They said, Allah's messenger, not even you, Thereupon he said, Not even I, but that Allah should wrap me in his mercy and grace. Sahih Muslim, Volume 4, Book of Paradise, Hadith number 6765. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Spreading awareness. If you go way back to the time of the Prophet, we find that the companions, they differed. But the difference was not in clashing and fighting. Why this issue is so controversial today in Islam? In Islam. Promoting righteousness. All the four scholars themselves, they said, if you find a hadith that goes against my saying, then you take the hadith. Once the concept is understood, I think many problems will be solved. Emphasizing God's message of peace for humankind. Never take as a close, intimate friend except a movement. One who has the taqwa or the truthful or the truthful. Uplifting our faith and good deeds. Patience in the obedience of Allah. Patience in abstaining from that which is haram. The greater the reward is in this life in and this life the and the Grasp the opportunity to enhance your knowledge of Islam in Islamic Viewpoint. Next on Peace TV. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. We're talking about sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, you have to know that when you are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all of you really must, to one degree or another degree, be in the path of Allah. This is life. This life is a struggle. This is the reality of this life. It is a struggle. We will be talking about that more. Life is a struggle. This is the reality. So you are going to be tested. And being a caller to Allah, being a caller to Islam, demands sacrifice. You will need to sacrifice your money. You must sacrifice your money for the sake of da'wah. I have mentioned this many times before. There are Christian organizations in this world. You will find just one of them. In one year is able to raise 670 million US dollars, 670 million US dollars in a year to propagate their religion. How about the Muslims? The organizations that we have to propagate Islam. Who is supporting them, brothers and sisters? Dawah takes sacrifice. And for those of us involved in Dawah, we know that unfortunately from the Muslims, the support is not there. It's a lot of the time a one-man show, a one-man band, a person spending his own money to print books from his own earnings, going out often alone, sometimes just two or three of them, going out on the street, calling people to La ilaha illallah. Many times it's just down to what it shouldn't be like that. Every Muslim should be calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is going to take a sacrifice of your time, because sometimes that may be, maybe time is more precious for you. Maybe money is more precious for you. Comfort, you're going to sacrifice the comfort of being in your home, of being in your home country. Maybe you will travel to another land, a strange land, where even if things are comfortable in some ways, they are uncomfortable in other ways. The process of taking a journey itself, the Prophet ﷺ said, traveling is a taste of punishment. And I've done a lot of traveling, brothers and sisters, I can tell you. Really, it's a taste of punishment. But this is the sacrifice people need to make for the call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may be away from your family. You will definitely be away from your family. Your family will miss you. You will miss them. So many things you will not see from your family that you wanted to see. But this is what this religion demands of us brothers and sisters. We must all of us, every one of you listening, you all must be ready to make sacrifice for the sake of Allah. And sacrifice does not mean, by the way, that you have an old pair of jeans that are ripped, and you know, that's, oh, I'll give that away. That's not a sacrifice, you're going to throw that away anyway. Oh yeah, I have a few dollars, a few rupees, a few whatever, right? Oh yeah, I've got that loose change, it's weighing down my pocket, you know, I don't want to carry it anyway. Here you are. That's not sacrifice. That's not, come on, be real. That's not sacrifice. That's just like getting rid of stuff that you don't really want anyway. Sacrifice is when you feel it. When you feel it. When it's something dear to you, you will not truly believe till you give from that which you love. From that which you love. Now, this is sacrifice, brothers and sisters. Look what Allah says in the Qur'an, the meaning of which is in Surah at tawbah Very, very powerful verses. You can check it for yourself. Surah at tawbah it's the ninth surah, 24th ayah. You should write this down, put this one on your wall. Remember this one. Very powerful ayah. Say, if it is that your fathers and your sons and your brothers and your wives or your relatives the wealth that you have gathered, the commerce in which you fear a decline, or the dwellings in which you delight, if they are dearer to you, all of those things, brothers and sisters, if those things Allah is saying, if they are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger, and striving in His cause, 
then wait until Allah brings about his decision and Allah guides not the rebellious. What is the decision of Allah? The Mufassirun said, the decision of Allah is his punishment. Brothers and sisters, please, this verse, this is Allah telling us something about how this world works. This is how the world works. This is the reality. If you love this dunya, if you love your family and your wife and your kids and your husband and your business and your home with all its comforts, whatever it may be, all of these things, are they more dear to you in your heart than sacrificing and struggling and making effort in the path of Allah? This is how you have to be. The way you have to be is that you have to love the struggle for Allah. If you're a caller to Islam, if that's your jihad, is the jihad you make with your tongue, calling people and inviting people, because that's definitely a type of struggle, this is what the word jihad means, a struggle, then you have to love the dawah. You have to love it so much that you love it more than your wife and your kids. And really, believe me, brothers and sisters, once you taste the reality of making this effort in the path of Allah, it becomes so beloved to you. Sometimes it's actually hard to go back to your normal life because of the pleasure. And that's how it should be. That is how it should be. And you need to stay like that. You need to be patient upon that. You need to be steadfast upon that. You know, not just I'm at university, for example, I get involved in the Islamic society for a few years, then I get married and that's it, I forget about it. You know, yeah, I still pray, I still fast. It's happened to me so many times I'm in the street. Yes, brother, I used to be involved in dawah 20 years ago when I was in the Islamic society. Well, what happened? What happened? Did your family become more beloved to you? than Allah and His Messenger and struggling and making an effort in His path, wait till His punishment comes. Because it will come. It will come. This is the warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah at tawbah Look how Allah refers to those people who prefer these worldly things to Him and His Messenger and this effort that we have to make in the path of Allah as rebellious as being a rebel. Because what have they rebelled against? In reality, brothers and sisters, think about it. If you think deeply, it's not even that deep. You don't have to think that deep. Think about it. The rebellion is in a sense against the way that Allah has laid our life out for us. What He wants us to do with our life. What He subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to do with our life. What does He want from us? He wants us to make this effort, this struggle, to love Him, to love His Messenger more than anything else. And it's just a short little life, brothers and sisters, you're not here for long. It's such a short, small, little life. Make the opportunity of it, okay? Brothers and sisters, as we have said before, we will say it again, in the Messenger of Allah, we have a most excellent example. Just let's look at the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the example of his sacrifice from the beginning of the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wallahi, even before Allah chose him to be a messenger, he was already sacrificing. You know when Jibreel came and he gave the first verses to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet went running to Khadija and he said, "Wrap me up, wrap me up," and then he explained what happened, and Khadija said. What did she say to him? Don't worry, Muhammad. She said, don't worry. She said, Allah will never desert you. Why? Because you are kind. You keep the ties of relationship. You look after the needy people and the poor and you release the slave. You see, he was doing this good stuff even before he was a prophet. And when he was a prophet, subhanAllah, Khadija, which was one of the most wealthy people in Medina, what did she spend her money on? What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They spent it and spent it and spent it on the deen of Islam, to support the deen of Islam, to help the weak Muslims, to help the poor, to help the needy, to help the destitute. And we will see later how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived and he insisted on living like that, a simple life, another characteristic that we need to imbibe 
within ourselves, brothers and sisters, a very important characteristic. Look at this spirit of sacrifice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have so many examples of the generosity of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So many examples from the lives of the Sahaba, how they were so generous and how they sacrificed so much for the sake of Allah. Look at the beautiful story of Abu Bakr and Umar when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in desperate need of financing a military expedition to protect the Muslims against the attack of the enemies. And this journey is long and it's in the heat of the summer. So he's trying to collect finances for this expedition. And he is really appealing to people to be so generous and to really give. So this time Omar, he's thinking, this is it. I'm going to outdo Abu Bakr. If there's one day I'm going to outdo him, it's going to be today. So Omar brings half of his wealth and he presents it to the Prophet ﷺ. Then Abu Bakr comes, brothers and sisters, Abu Bakr, you know this story, I know you know this story. He's given everything, everything. So when the Prophet ﷺ said, what have you left for your family? Abu Bakr, he said, I have left Allah and his messenger. That is enough for them. That sacrifice, brothers and sisters. We're going to hear more about sacrifice in our next episode, Characteristics of the Caller. Until then, don't forget to practice some sacrifice in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his sake. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.